Hey everybody, I'm Angela Sackett and I have a special guest today. <laughs> Can you tell everybody who you are? Hi, I'm Angela Sackett. This is Isaac and I am from saltatlux.com as well as dancingwithmyfather.net and I'm so glad you joined us today. We're going to make the easiest summer main dish or side dish recipe you've ever made or haven't made. It depends. I want you to chime in as you're watching, if you're watching live, and let me know you're there and if you have any questions. Um, but today we're going to make what? Gazpacho. Gazpacho. And yesterday when I told Isaac what we were making, he told me what? <laughs> it's kind of like a salsa in a bowl. Yes. Salsa soup, right? And it, that he loves gazpacho because we're a spicy family. <laughs> um, but we're going to do a little twist on our gazpacho today. So typically it's made with southwestern flavors and we make ours pretty spicy with fresh jalapeno. But yesterday we went to, where did we go yesterday? Do you remember? No. Where did we shop for our produce? Oh, market. Yep. We went to the farmer's market in our little town. And they had these beautiful big bunches of fresh basil, and we decided that we're going to put an Italian spin on our gazpacho today. So if you're just chiming in, um, Angela Sackett, I write for saltatlux.com. I like to share ideas for using hospitality as a way, whoa, onions flying, <laughs> using hospitality as a way to share God's love. And so today we're getting ready. Uh, my daughter and I are going to be hosting a house full of young adult girls, sweet girls that we've grown to love who are uh, serving this summer at Harvey Cedars Bible Conference, and they're gonna be coming for a girl's day. And their number one request was that we make something yummy and healthy. So uh, we're gonna talk about some tips about how to host a crowd while we're making our gazpacho. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start, we have two cups of tomato juice in the blender. And if you're watching this, um, what I would love to ask is that you click like, click share if you're watching live or later. And uh, if you go to saltatlux.com and sign up to be on our mailing list, later this uh, next week we'll be sending out the recipe. So don't worry about getting all the measurements. I'm probably not even going to give them today. Um, but we'll send out the recipe and then we'll also be posting pictures in the next week or so of our little girls day so you can see how we plate it and everything. So we're gonna, we've are gonna we got two cups of tomato juice in our blender. And Isaac, I'm going to ask you if you will put our onion in there. I'm just going to have half an onion here. And I've got a little bit of peel, so I'm going to pull that off. And we're just going to um, cut that in just a little bit smaller chunks. If you have a high-speed blender like we do, um, really don't even need to cut it out much at all. But Isaac, do you want to put those in there for me, baby? There you go. And we're going to do four tomatoes. Splatter. It's all right. <laughs> right over there. You got a towel? Good. Should have probably had that close by, huh? Yeah. All right, we're going to do four tomatoes. And we're just going to quarter those also. Do you want to cut or do you want mom to cut, bud? Okay, All right, you got it. It's my face. Your face is awesome. A little bit of splatter, but that's okay. It comes with the territory. Maybe next time we'll wear aprons. <laughs> you want to pick out two more good-looking tomatoes for me? Thank you. That's perfect. And I rinse those. Some of them, anyway. Um, so you can start putting those in there, and I just set them down in. So all we're doing is just cutting the tomatoes in quarters. When I said easy, I meant easy. If you haven't made gazpacho before, we're making it in the blender. Um, what I'm going to do is that last tomato, I am going to save it out, and we're going to cut that up and put it in at the very end. After we've blended our soup, um, we're going to, yep, you can put all those quarter ones in there. After we've blended it, we're going to save that last little bit, and we're just going to um, put the, stir the chunks in by hand. I like to leave a little bit of texture in there. So um, next thing we're going to do is a pepper. Um, traditional recipes call for green pepper, at least the ones that I've seen, but we're not really a green pepper family, are we? <laughs> so what color pepper do you want to put into it? Red, orange, or yellow? Yellow. I'm all good with yellow. Um, so, a couple tips for hosting a house full. We are having, I think, 35 girls over this Sunday. I think some of them might be watching. If you are girls, we can't wait to have you. Um, Isaac will be running for his life for Guy Day with uh, Daddy and Big Brothers. But um, there's 35 girls coming, I think, maybe more. Um, and one of the things that I like to do when we're having a house full is um, to have as much as I can made. Thank you, buddy as much as I can made up in advance. And that's because I tend to be a last minute crazy host. I've shared that with you guys before. Um, so if I can have it made up and already plated, I can. What I like about gazpacho is no cook. 
fresh summery vegetables, but also it tastes better when it sits for a day or two. So we're gonna make this up today and tomorrow, and then we are gonna pop it in the fridge and leave it there. I'm gonna leave out probably, I don't know, maybe a half of that pepper, and we'll chop that up at the end too, so you can put all those pieces in the blender. <laughs> Um, you got it. He bought just a few of those pieces, so we'll kind of yeah. yeah, that's good. So if you're just chiming in and you have favorite summer savory recipes, leave them in the comments below because I want to hear, and maybe we'll make them in the future if you like what you see. Um, let's go ahead, bud, just to get that moving. It's going to get really loud, but if you will pop the lid on there for me, and we're just going to turn it on low for just a minute, kind of to get it working. You don't have to do that. You can probably put everything in at once if you have a big blender, but yep, that's good. Just go okay. Woohoo! More splatter. All right, you can pop that lid off. Next thing we're going to put in is we've got our half an onion, we've got our tomatoes and our pepper. We're going to put some garlic in there. Isaac, you want to measure it for me? All right. About a teaspoon of garlic is going in. If you have fresh garlic, by all means use it. Sometimes I'll even put roasted garlic in there, but today we don't, so we have um, already chopped garlic. That's perfect. If you like more, put more in. And if you're using fresh garlic, you don't have to chop it first. Just drop it in the blender and it goes on its own. A um, more easy tip. Good job. All right, let's do our salt. Do you want to grab salt for me? Yes. Which ones? You okay. can grab uh, the big one or you can go. We have some in the other room. You can grab. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do cracked black pepper, about a half a teaspoon or so. You can do more if you like. I like mine pretty peppery. I don't even measure. So if you are uh, like me and you're a, loose, a loosely measuring chef, that's okay. Do it by taste and you can always add more at the end. Perfect. You can go ahead and put that in there, buddy. You can just eye it. I'm gonna put about a teaspoon in there. Yeah, do a little more. So if you have tips for hosting a crowd, feel free to chime in and leave them in the comments below whether you're watching live or later. And just a reminder, um, if you go to salt at lux, S-A-L-E-T-L-U-X.com um, and sign up for our mailing list, we'll send this recipe out to you later this week or this coming week. Um, salt at Lux stands for salt and light, which is the way that God describes his people. And so I'm wanting to encourage you to welcome people into your home, to make yummy things for them, and use that as an opportunity to share how much he loves them. So Isaac, let's do about a tablespoon of olive oil. And you, you wanna measure it? You got it? Yep. Go for it, buddy. While you're doing that, I'm gonna cut a lemon. We're gonna put the juice of lemon in there. And I like my little wooden reamer. You can use, that's good, perfect. Yep, good job. Woohoo! If you don't make a mess, you didn't have fun. <laughs> Good, you need to set that right over there, babe. Mm -hmm. All right, so I like to use this, my old-fashioned reamer. Um, you can also use, uh, can you, what are we doing here? You can use lemon juice in a bottle, that's totally fine. It's a flexible recipe, honestly. Like I said, sometimes I don't even measure. Okay, most of the time we don't <laughs> measure, right? Which is why sometimes we get really spicy gazpacho. So today we're doing an Italian-inspired version. Instead of jalapeno and cilantro, which we normally use, we're gonna do uh, red wine vinegar in there and we're gonna put basil in there as well. All right, you wanna work on getting those, I didn't do it over my hand, so if you wanna pull those lemon seeds out and then you can just dump that right in the blender for me. Good job, I'm gonna steal your towel. All right, we're gonna put a quarter cup of red wine vinegar in there. And I'll and get it out. <laughs> can you get it? You know what else you can do? Here, I'll do it. I'm just gonna pour it over my hand. Just use my hand to pour it over and catch those seeds as we go. To be honest with you, in a blender like this, it'll eat the seeds right up. So if you're super lazy, let them go. Doesn't matter. All right, I'm gonna rinse my hands. And if you would, sir, put a dash of Worcestershire sauce in there. Give it a little more flavor. Got it? A dash, right? How much is a dash? However much looks good. <laughs> So one of the other tips that I like to do is I like to plate uh, the dishes that we're making the night before. And I don't actually mean plate them on the table, but I like to lay out our dishes. And this is a tip my mother-in-law taught me. She will actually, a day or two before our big family dinners, um, 
put the dishes out on the table, put little notes in the dishes of what's going to go in them and the serving um, utensils and everything so that way she knows in advance if she's missing anything. And we're actually going to do that for our crowd that's coming over on Sunday. We're going to set everything out. I have a giant, um, it's like a, a canning jar that we're going to serve our gazpacho in for the girls. We'll have everything all set up the night before and that way if we're missing anything we'll know and we won't be in a last minute panic. Not that I would ever panic, right? I never panic. <laughs> That's funny to him because he knows his mama. Okay, and we're going to do a cucumber. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to do the same thing. I'm going to take that cucumber, cut it in half, and I'm going to save half. And at the end, I'm going to cut those, that into small cubes and just stir it in so we've got some texture there. Thank you. If you don't have an Isaac and you want to borrow mine, give us a call. Wait, are you for borrowing? <laughs> Maybe not. Depends what they're going to feed you. Will work for food, maybe. <laughs> All right, Isaac, you can put those right in the blender. We're getting kind of full. If you need to make it in batches, you can also make it in batches if you have a smaller blender. No big deal. Awesome. Almost there. Ah, uh -huh, sure. I said I was going to save half, didn't I? So we got that half, so you can put the rest in there. Is it yummy? So we're doing okay. <laughs> Miss Charlotte Potter says you're both adorable. Hi, Charlotte! Thank you for saying hi. We're adorable. You guys that? I don't have blue eyes like he does. He's the charmer, but I can smile at you. All right, last thing we're going to do, basil. Your favorite. So I always, every time we go and buy basil, I tell a story that embarrasses Isaac. What's my basil story? Or I guess it's your basil story. What story do I always tell? Well, when she gets basil at the store, before we even get to the register, I probably already ate it all. <laughs> He has been known to eat it, and his big brother Ethan used to do the same thing. So we're going to get this in the blender before Isaac eats it all up. And I'm just, I cut off a big bunch. I'm not even really measuring it. I would say it's probably a quarter of a cup. And you can pop that in there. Now let's talk just a little bit, a um, couple other things that I, ideas that I had about um, serving a crowd. You can put the lid on now because we're almost there. Um, we like to, there's a couple different trains of thought on this. One is that you simplify and do only a couple dishes. It's less stressful for the host. It's less stressful for the person cooking. I got a thumbs up from somebody. Thank you. Um, what we're going to do for Sunday, we're making a couple different soups. So girls who are coming to our house, here's your spoiler. We're doing a Thai coconut chicken soup, which is my daughter's favorite. We're doing Isaac's favorite gazpacho, which is cold, so we don't have to cook it. That's just going to get pulled right out of the fridge. Um, we're going to do a gluten-free biscuit with um, cheese and herbs in it. And then we're going to do a goat cheese butter for that and um, a, a giant salad, summery salad, and then also a big bowl of fruit, which we're gonna top with uh, mint and fresh cream, our favorite. Uh, so simple recipes, not anything super fancy. And what I like about that is there's a little bit of variety, so you can choose if you don't like one or the other, but also um, it's easy to grab. People can serve themselves. You are awesome. Your sister trained you right, <laughs> being a neat chef. Um, so they can serve themselves. They can go back and get seconds if we're playing games and they want a little bit more, but it's no fuss. And that's one of my favorite things about hosting a crowd is trying to make a no fuss meal. Now, um, my daughter Anna made a suggestion, which I thought was really smart as well. And that is you might want to consider going the opposite direction, having a smaller amount of multiple dishes. And that way people with preferences or food allergies, they can pick and choose between what they want. Now that can get um, labor intensive if you're the one doing all the cooking. So probably my number one favorite tip when hosting a crowd is invite everybody to bring something. And um, girls, if you're coming to my house Sunday, don't bring anything. We're not asking that. We want to spoil you. But um, that can be a great way to make your guests feel welcome and a part and they get to show off their favorite recipes too. Um, do you remember there's a funky recipe that our friend Miss Tina made for Thanksgiving one year? It's, she calls it pink stuff. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see that face? So it's just this crazy wild salad that's pink when you get to the end of it, dessert. And um, she brought that, and that was a family tradition for her, and now it's become something that our family loves. So consider giving your guests a chance to bring something as well. That'll um, increase what you have to offer, increase the variety, and let them invest in the day too. Um, what else? Anything else? Any other tips we have to share? thinking allergies I did want to mention that so I have some food sensitivities um, working on some things to try to improve my health 
And um, I gotta be honest, it's embarrassing to have to tell my guests that I'm allergic to something or that I can't eat something. I don't wanna do that to them. Um, so if you are a guest, I wanna encourage you to take something that you can eat. Um, and if you are a host, consider having something that is allergy friendly. Some of the big allergens, you know, nuts, dairy, um, gluten is a big one right now. A lot of people are avoiding our grains. And the easiest way to do that as a host or as a guest is just use real food. If you're using fruits and vegetables out of the garden, for most people, that's gonna be safe. It's a healthy choice. And if it's in season, it's super yummy too, right? We had a blast yesterday going to the farmer's market and picking out fresh basil and fresh Jersey tomatoes and all that good stuff, cucumbers, right? We got cucumbers. Um, so consider using fresh seasonal food, real fruits and vegetables, and you're almost always safe. Um, all right, so let's get really loud for one more second. We'll make sure that's on super tight, and we're just gonna give that a quick little blend. Good job. Awesome, and that is literally it. That's all we have to do. So I'm gonna pull that lid off, there we go. Awesome, Isaac's favorite salsa in a bowl, Italian inspired. And um, what I'm gonna do for that, all I'm gonna do is, um, when we serve it at home, I usually put it in a pitcher and we just pour it into our bowls. To, uh, for Sunday, when our girlfriends are coming over, we're gonna put it in a big giant um, lidded container so they can dish it out whenever they're ready. One other thing I wanted to show you, and just as a little tip, you may already know this and that's totally cool. I'm gonna put out several bowls of things that our guests can put in their um, gazpacho on Sunday. We're gonna put out probably some goat cheese or Parmesan cheese. We're gonna put out some uh, finely chopped green onions and uh, lemon wedges that they can squeeze in. I also uh, did a reduction of balsamic vinegar. All I did was just simmer that balsamic vinegar down until it got nice and thick. They can drizzle that on top. And then I'm gonna chiffonade, uh, which just means ribbon, some uh, basil. And all, to, all you need to do to do that is just roll it up and then we're just going to run our knife through it to make little ribbons. Super pretty, super easy, and that's it. And Isaac, why don't you grab a spoon? You wanna taste it? I'm gonna put a little bit of that basil on top since I know it's your favorite and mine too. Stephanie says she can't wait till Sunday. Yay, Stephanie, can't wait to have you Sunday too. Hope you like gazpacho. If not, we're in trouble. No, you'll have Thai chicken soup too. All right, go for it, buddy. Sprinkle of sea salt on top is really good. You want to taste it and make sure you have enough salt in. Yes? That's good. <laughs> good job. All right, so Angela Sackett, my uh, sites are dancingwithmyfather.net and saletlux.com. It's S-A-L-E-T-L-U-X, which stands for salt and light. If you go to saletlux.com and sign up for our mailing list, we'll be sending you the recipe this next week. Um, if you like what you see today, please share it on your Facebook wall. Click like at the bottom so I know there was somebody here. And if you have suggestions for ways to host a crowd, I know there are lots of people out there who know way more than me that I'm learning from too. Please share them below and we will definitely um, make sure to share them as well. I think that's all. Is that all? Should we say goodbye? <laughs> have a great day. Thanks for coming.